Okay, I'm going to start uh, looking at how I use Ning um, technology in my classroom by just demonstrating that it is a password protected community. Let's see if I remember my own password here. There we go. It brings me up to the main page. Google searches should not pick up that my students, even though that I do require them to use their own first and last name, um, Google searches should not pick up that they're a member of the Ning uh, because I have it as a, as a completely private community. And I do invite uh, administrators at our school, teachers at our school, the deans, I teach at a boarding school, uh, parents, relatives, guardians, anybody. I've had tutors um, who I've invited to join the community and the students are taught from day one that this community is an extension of the classroom and so that nothing that would be considered unacceptable in the classroom should be occurring here on the Ning and that includes the kind of language they use, the formality with which they interact with each other and just even the topics they introduce. So um, this is the just a quick look at the main page here. I'm going to go across the tabs and uh, just kind of walk you through those a little bit, show you how I set it up, and then show you some of the ways in which I use them. Uh, the first few things here are preset by Ning. The main page is, is everything you see here. Uh, I did choose almost all of these particular elements to be here in the order they're in. I'll show you that in a sec. The invite is standard. It's preset and there's two ways to join. I do try to give them this link. I write it up on the board or I I give them the link and have them try to follow it. Uh, the difficulty comes in having the my students type it in accurately. The number of students who pop their hand in the air, Mrs. Gregory, I know I did it right and it's not letting me in and I'll come in and they will have forgotten a letter or they will have used an I for the capital uh, for the lowercase L or an O for the zero. So the other thing that I can do is enter their email addresses manually and so sometimes I'll just have them come in and type in their email addresses and uh, then I'll send invitations to all of them. The only difficulty with that is twofold. One is that the invitations can expire after a certain period of time and the other thing is if they have joined another Ning I find some of them maybe are part of a, a gaming Ning whatever email address they're, they've used for that Ning they really sh either need to remember the password and use that same password with our class Ning or if they don't remember it then they can't use that address and so I do encourage my students early in the school year uh, we sit down with the computers and we have a day when they log into the Ning they log into turnitin.com and to Noodle Tools and I encourage them to start over with a whole new email address that they use only for school and they make it something fairly easy for them to remember uh, a password that they can remember or if they want to they can give it to me and I will save it in a, in a very secure place but if they're using their own uh, typical email address that they use for everything else, sometimes they forget the password that they're using for each of the websites that I require them to use. And sometimes their email addresses are either kind of silly or embarrassing or just downright inappropriate. So sometimes having them start a whole new email address is a good idea. So anyways, this is each each person who has a Ning has their own page. You can see I've customized this. I don't know what I was thinking. I must have been in a very pink mood. It shows all of my activity. Uh, then we go to the members page where you can see some of my students have avatars and some of them have customized their own pages, how they want them to be done. Um, I don't remember if anybody's are really safe to show and I don't want to use up time with that right now but some of them have done a really nice job of customizing their pages. Uh, you can see some of them have chosen avatars, some of them haven't gotten around to that yet. Okay, in the collaboration section um, there's a discussion forum where I will put in questions and then they'll respond and the nice thing about the discussion forum is that it is threaded so they might reply to me or they might reply to somebody else's reply and they can go several layers in with their replies and it's still very clear, very obvious. I'll show you how I use groups in my other Ning, my AP Lit and Comp Ning, and then blogs. I like how uh, Ning does blogs. Uh, let's go ahead and just start a blog post real quickly. I'm going to go sample blog, blah, blah, blah. I don't have a lot to say today, um, but I can save it as a draft. And uh, that's really nice because then I can go back to edit blog posts and you'll see that um, I've got several that are published. You can see the publishing dates, but for whatever reason I've got several that are um, unpublished and the little pencil uh, thing shows me that. So they can start something in class and then save it as a draft and then come back and work on it and not publish it for the class to see until they're ready. 
Uh, the other thing I like is that we can actually choose the dates for the blog posts. I had them recently do a time travel series of blog posts. They had to do five blog posts. They had to pick a time in history that they'd like to go back to for whatever reason. They could choose a reason of altering history, learning more um, about what really happened, experiencing it, just being there, and maybe not discovering anything new except what it felt like to be there. And you can see from our monthly archives that they were able to change dates and uh, be quite realistic. Some of them went way, way back in time. Uh, so that was just kind of a, a fun little aside there. Um, then there's content. I don't have any videos uploaded. I'll go ahead and show you my network and show you how I easily I was able to lay everything out. Right? This is the template from my main page. The description of my blog is there, the members box. This is a um, text box that contains links to our video site and also the link to Noodle Tools. I have a separate video section that has no videos uploaded. We don't have groups for this class. Um, the text boxes are exactly what they say. They started out as empty boxes that I then filled with text, lot, lots of uh, links often. The blog I've already shown you, but I'll show you what it looks like on the front page. The forum is there. Um, again, a couple text boxes and birthdays. Let's go ahead and add a couple things. Let's add some events over here. Notice it's just drag and drop. And let's add the possibility of adding photos. And then I'm just going to click Save. And then we're going to go back to the main page and see if those showed up. And sure enough, this is this was a, um, the the explanation of my community here, the members. Uh, this whole thing is a text box. I've just gone ahead and filled it with links. We have the video section, we have the group section, and then I just added the events uh, section. This part right here is standard. Daily work I added as a text box. This is a link to some vocabulary stuff. The birthdays I had added. Photos I just now added. And so I've got several text boxes and this is all their daily work. I do it um, one week at a time. And then you can see our blog is down here and you can see down here um, is another box of some research links that I wanted them to be able to say, see. And I'm going to go ahead and click on one particular student. You can see he has, in fact, done a nice job of customizing his page. And I can see all of his blog posts. In fact, if I really want to go and read just his blog, I can click there. And then I'm going to see nothing but the 10 blog posts that he personally has done. And then the other thing I want to be sure to show you, let's see if I have forgotten anything really valuable here. Um, how I use the materials section. We've just started Fahrenheit 451 and so here I've got the reading schedule uploaded as a PDF. So um, I've handed this out to the students. I have it posted in the classroom but if anybody doesn't remember what should be read when it's always available here. I've got a variety of reading response questions that they can also um, download and that's all of them are up there ready to go for the entire unit and then their very last project for the quarter is going to be an upfront presentation that has to do with a journey again they've been given this information but it's up here in case they can't find it or in case they've lost it I've got one student who's gone for a week so he's accessing all of this from home and then here's the grading rubric uh, to make sure that they have that available and I like this because the number of times kids lose something and then as soon as they've told me they've lost it and I utter the words okay I'll make you another copy. Well, then who's, whose problem is it? And who has to solve that problem? Suddenly it becomes mine. Whereas by putting everything up on the internet, um, up on our Ning, it's all there and it's their responsibility to find it. By the way, I did want to mention uh, Ning Technology. I'm not Ning Technology, Rubestar. If you're not familiar with Rubestar, this is how I made my rubric. It's a great website and it's completely free. I think I'm going to wrap this segment up for now. I might say a couple more words about my English 2 site before going into my AP Lit and Comp site in my next segment, but I'm about to hit 10 minutes, so I need to stop.